Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garn from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd World. It is My Nerd World, and welcome to it. My name is John Justice, and I was committed to not doing a show today. And I'm not technically calling this a show. My day has ran long. But I couldn't help but put something out since the album has leaked online. So, ahead of Friday's official release and the tour starting, there'll be a lot to talk about. And I'll have another longer episode tomorrow, uh, sometime in the afternoon here, my time in, uh, in Minneapolis. Um, because I've been getting a lot of a lot of feedback from you, and it's been it's been fantastic, and I want to talk a little bit a uh, little bit about that. Uh, what's happened is Amazon sent out the vinyl version of the album early to a whole bunch of people. So late in the day yesterday, I started to receive messages uh, from you saying, "Hey, the album's leaking online," and it started off with handheld recordings of uh, you know cell phone recordings of snippets of the album, which is very similar to uh, similar. To what happened to me. Um, and then this turned into this morning links going around of the entire album, vinyl rips of the uh, of the album. Uh, and I'm excited. And this has been a really special moment for me. And I can't wait for the rest of this week. I, I feel really, really blessed in a number of different ways. One, I feel blessed that I've had the opportunity to listen to this album over the course of the past four weeks or so and share with you uh, my thoughts. It uh, honestly was killing me not to be able to to share it with people. And um, I'm glad that that those individuals out there that have had the chance to find it, and I'm not going to point you in the direction of where to go. And honestly, I wouldn't even know which way to point you at. Um, at the moment, last time I looked on the typical torrent sites where you can go and download uh, leaked albums and movies and things of that nature, uh, I haven't seen it uh, posted. I don't feel bad talking about it. I'm confident that almost all Depeche Mode fans are going to be buying physical releases and probably multiple versions of it. Um, I'm sure the band doesn't want to see the album get leaked, but at the same time, based on the response that we've heard so far and what I've heard from you, I think they're going to be pretty excited that these albums went out uh, went out early. So I've been receiving a lot of feedback throughout the day from you uh, over your excitement of hearing Memento Mori for the first time. And this is another reason why I feel blessed, because this has been a really unique experience for me as a you know, multiple decades Depeche Mode fan going back to 1985 to, again, one, have been able to share with you my thoughts, but two, now being able to hear your thoughts on an album that I've been living with for weeks. And I'm so thrilled that so many people are reacting to Memento Mori the same way that I am, and it seems like the vast majority are loving it. It's really interesting to hear the different takes on different songs and which songs people are gravitating towards and which songs people aren't. Certain songs that are uh, more controversial than others. And this has been a very, very interesting day receiving your feedback on the album and hearing from you and being on the Depeche Dash Mode um, home forum and reading page after page of comments from fans and their thoughts on the on the album. Uh, and a lot of them are echoing what I've said, and that just makes me feel good because I was somewhat trepidatious in what your reaction would be with the album based off of what I've been sharing over the past month. And I was really hoping that you would listen to it and be getting the same similar vibes that I was getting. And I've been hearing from multiple people that, yeah, while we seem to be gravitating towards different songs in different ways, uh, which is typical, it's all very subjective. It It's pretty clear that everybody seems to really like what they're hearing. A lot of people equating it to some of their best work since Ultra. I've been saying since Songs of Faith and Devotion. I've seen a few comments out there saying since Violator. But overall the response has been overwhelmingly positive, and uh, that's just, as a Depeche Mode fan, that's just really, really awesome to hear. So on tomorrow's show, I will be sharing more of your uh, thoughts on the album, and I will be the rest of the week. I can't wait to hear the first reviews from um, 
the opening night show. I've got a couple of you that have been reaching out that I know are heading or are in Sacramento um, already for the tour to uh, kick off. And um, I'm just I'm jealous and I'm excited. I know I'll be going to see them in November in Denver. I feel uh, incredibly blessed that I'll be able to to do that trip and to see them uh, there at that time. Uh, even though we got to wait eight months, but that's fine. I'm totally cool with it. I, I cannot. Uh, I cannot wait. So one thing that I wanted to share. Uh, I'm going to hold off on all the listener feedback until until tomorrow. I'm looking at comments right here. Um, I'm loving Memento Mori. It's like new slash old DM sort of definite throwbacks. More on that later. So again, just uh, the comments coming in are are, are awesome. Um, one thing I wanted to just uh, say. And then I'll wrap this up. I promised myself I would keep it short. I've got other things that I need to do, but I wanted to get something out today. I feel like this is like a breaking news podcast with the album being out there. We're all unique, right? We're all unique as individuals, but we're also unique as Depeche Mode fans. I feel special being a Depeche Mode fan, and and I know a lot of you feel the same way. I feel like I've discovered this thing that, so many other millions of people have discovered, but it still feels like a very small and special community. And it really comes down to, clearly, what this band has created, the uniqueness of what this band has created. And what Depeche Mode has done over the past 20 years or so in their release cycle is something unique and special to today's society, which continues to, in my opinion, make Depeche Mode magical. Now, if you are listening going, what in the hell are you talking about, John? Let me let me tell you, and I'll keep this short. I have an article. I'm, I'm only going to read to you one portion of this. I pulled it from, uh, from Yahoo today. Electro Pop Master M83. The title of the article is "We're Losing the Mystery in Music." Now, I'm not the I'm not a huge M83 uh, M83 fan. Uh, one of my favorite songs is "Midnight City." I absolutely love that song, uh, and it's been one of my favorite songs ever since it it came out. It's probably in my my top ten, if not to, uh, top twenty, favorite songs that aren't uh, Depeche Mode. And there's a few other songs by M83 that I enjoy. This is not a band that I've gone and downloaded their albums before. Uh, and to, to the point that I didn't even realize what this guy's name was. Anthony Gonzalez, the article starts off, the man behind M83, the group that helped define electro pop, fears for a music industry that increasingly wants to be influencers. Now, the article goes through um, M83's success, 800 million listens on Spotify, the um, the hit song back in 2011, Midnight City, um, his impact on electro pop uh, you know, and, and electronica music uh, over the course of the past decade or so. Then he makes this comment in the article that really stuck out to me. The entertainment industry feels increasingly like a rat race, Gonzalez added. When we are losing the mysterious side of artists these days, unless you release an album every year and headline festivals every year, it's like you've disappeared. I've been going through the amazing Depeche Mode Bible uh, the Monument book. It's absolutely just an absolutely incredible book. I was struck. I haven't read through the whole thing yet. I've gone through a page by page flip through and read snippets here and there, but I plan on reading it front to back when I when I have the chance. But in the book, I was struck at how frequent Depeche Mode was putting out music back in the 80s and 90s. I never occurred to me because time runs slower when we're younger. It never occurred to me just how how close together the releases were of Music for the Masses, Violator, and subsequently Songs of Faith and Devotion. Um, even Black Celebration. I mean, you're talking about like five years in this in this time period. And again, time moves slower. Years feel like decades when you're when you're a kid. When you get older, that time slows down. We get into routines and time flies by. Before you know it, your boys are 16 and 20 years old. <laughs> and you're so thankful they're still living the 20-year-old is still living in the house with you. Depeche Mode changed up their release schedule. We we all know this, right? After after 
Songs of Faith and Devotion and Alan Wilder Departs, what the band went through on the devotional tour. We get to Ultra, we do the, the singles collection, and then we're on kind of this four-year cycle. And then this leads to this massive gap. I mean, the biggest gap ever in Depeche Mode history in terms of releasing music between Spirit and Memento Mori. What Depeche Mode has done in an increasingly fast paced world where you can't where things are pumped out over and over and over again and you've got to keep streaming numbers up and you got to keep eyeballs and you got to get clicks and you got to get views what Depeche Mode has done has created this scarcity that has kept them mysterious and magical and it's just such a rarity in this world I'm a massive massive Star Wars fan the Star Wars has been, and The Mandalorian, and I won't go too far down this road. This is a Depeche Mode podcast. If you want to hear more about this, listen to my Star Wars podcast. But they've there's like a 25% viewership drop in The Mandalorian, and I love The Mandalorian, but I firmly believe it's a quality issue, and it's a frequency issue. It's a quantity issue. They've just been pumping out so much Star Wars that... I can't believe I'm saying it as a as a fan since I was five years old. I mean, Star Wars was the first thing that I was ever a fan of, and Depeche Mode was the first music I was ever a fan of. I mean, if the next thing that I was a fan of after Star Wars, it was Depeche Mode. But Depeche Mode, for what they do, haven't done what other artists have to do. They didn't become influence, uh, influencers. We know a lot about this band because we've been really, really blessed with having documentaries, but as I talked about on yesterday's episode and the contentious uh, situation with Spirit and sort of the lack of really knowing what happened on Delta Machine until recently in these interviews, um, we've known quite a bit about the band, even though they've remained mysterious. They've led us into their world and the recording process, which has been nothing um, you know, but amazing as a, as a fan to see this and to be able to know this background and just what a tumultuous career that they've had. But they don't release music every single year, and we wait patiently for it to come out. And to me, it really contributes to the longevity of this band. I'm I'm glad that it took them six years to put out this record. I'm heartbroken that we lost Fletch. But with Memento Mori, they've given us something special. And after all these years, they're still making this relevant, emotional music that we can connect with. And I think a large part of that has been the joy of scarcity. There's another, there's another article that I have. You know, you know, FOMO, fear of missing out, right? There's actually another phrase that's going around the antithesis of FOMO, um, uh, of of FOMO, fear of missing out, and it's 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 JOMO, the joy of missing out. And that's not to say we've been missing out, but that is to say that. Because we've had a scarcity of Depeche Mode, it's kept it relevant and special. There's a theory out there as it relates to Star Wars that Star Wars really works well when there's 10-year gaps between the storytelling. And if you look at what happened with the original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, and the sequel trilogy, regardless of your opinion of the three trilogies, the opening films, Star Wars... You know, Episode Four, Star Wars, Episode One, The Phantom Menace, and The Force Awakens. All of those movies were the biggest successes, box office wise, in the in terms of the of the of the franchises. And there was a scarcity in there. Now, as a fan, I just don't have that necessarily. While I look forward to The Mandalorian, I'm not getting up because I get up at two thirty in the morning. I'm not getting up at one a.m. to go and watch it. I'm waiting and watching it later in the later in the day. I just wanted to share that with you as sort of another aspect of the dynamic of this band, apart from their incredible creativity that is wholly unique to Depeche Mode, and that while I'm sure we all would love to hear more music from the band and would love to have had those four years cut down to two years, and and perhaps they still could have pumped out just as good as content as they did, but... That didn't happen. This is what happened. We had larger gaps between releases, and this time we had six-year gaps. We all waited uh, and anticipated the release of this record, and I think a lot of us very cautiously were like, what are we going to get? What are we going to get? Because you wait that long, and you can be easily disappointed. And I'm just thrilled to hear that people aren't. It's like I created it. I didn't create this. You know, Dave Martin, James Ford, Martin Salongni, and Richard Butler, and everybody you know behind the scenes created all this. But... 
as a fan to be in this moment. Memento mori this moment is what I'm trying to say. Remember, you must die, so live every day to its fullest. We have new Depeche Mode music. 12 new songs, and I'm hearing that apparently there's two, I think two, Peter T-O-O. Peter too tweeted this out earlier, and I've been so busy I haven't had a chance to go look at the tweet. But apparently there's two or three. I think Dave said there were four fully produced songs that didn't make it onto the album and wouldn't be on a on a deluxe cut. And then Peter too tweeted out that there were like two more Richard Butler, Martin Gore pen songs that were done that we may get as B-sides sometime in the future. But be that as it may, we have 12 new Depeche Mode songs and a new tour. Memento Mori. Remember you must die and live every moment to its fullest and enjoy this time. Because we may not get it again. But I don't know. Hearing what Dave and Martin and how much it seems like they're actually enjoying these interviews that they're doing and how they have this renewed relationship, I'm hesitant to say that they may not, after this tour, turn around and maybe maybe not do a full-blown tour, but they may not turn around and try to pump out some more music. In the meantime, we have new music, and that is cause for a black celebration. <laughs> All right, I've been cheesy enough. i gone longer than I said I was going to go. Just wanted to share with you my thoughts. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Please email me, talkshownerd at gmail.com. Leave a comment up on YouTube, and I'll have a, a longer episode and more thoughts to share tomorrow. So thanks for checking this out. Please like and subscribe on YouTube. Share it with your friends as well. Whatever platform you listen to podcasts on, make sure you subscribe so you never miss an episode. And I love it when I get your uh, your feedback. It means uh, It means a lot. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye. Hello, this is Martin Gore from Depeche Mode. Hi, this is Dave Garm from Depeche Mode, and you are listening to My Nerd World. <laughs>